Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about conversion sequences. And we're going to be talking about a specific part of conversion sequences. And there is a theorem that says conversion sequences are bounded. Now, in this video, we are going to look to show the proof of that theorem. So for now, we'll say we'll make claim that conversion sequences are bounded. Here's our claim that conversion sequences are bounded. Now, in order for this to become true, then there has to be a proof. So we'll begin with such a proof. So for now, we're going to say that we have so let's say we have a convergence sequence and let's say that that convergence sequence is SN so suppose SN is a convergent sequence. And Sn converges to S. And S is some value uh, in the real numbers. Now, we need to imply, we need to apply the definition of a sequence. And the definition of a sequence is the limit, the formal definition of a limit of sequences. Now, the formal definition is something that requires previous understanding. So in order to understand this step, in order to understand the entire theorem, you need to understand this formal definition, which we will unfortunately not go over in this video. But if you do review that topic, then all of this should make sense. So hopefully if you, if you do know, then we'll continue on. If you don't, then I urge you to go back, learn that formal definition, and then come back and watch this video. So we will imply the formal definition of a sequence, which is which states, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists capital N such that small n greater than capital N implies that the sequence minus s is less than epsilon. So, in this case, we have for all for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists capital N such that small n greater than big N implies s n minus s is less than epsilon. So that's the definition of a sequence of a limit of sequences. Now, we will, by reverse triangle inequality, we will see that So by reverse triangle inequality, so by reverse triangle inequality, Sn minus S is greater than or equal to Sn to the absolute value of Sn minus the absolute value of S. And that is the reverse triangle inequality. And this implies that Sn is less than s plus epsilon. So this implies this implies that Sn 
the absolute value of s n is less than absolute value of s plus epsilon. So as you can see here, since we broke it down, we have the absolute value of s n minus s is greater than or equal to s n minus s. So if we take this and we substitute it here because this is less than this, so we substitute this in this root, in this spot. We take the absolute, we take this absolute s, add absolute s to both sides, and we end up with the absolute value of s n is less than the absolute value of s plus epsilon right here. So now we just simply manipulated the equation. So the inequality, I, sh I should say. Now we need to continue forward. So how are we going to show that convergent sequences are bounded? Now the definition of a bounded sequence states that you have a constant m or the definition, uh, yeah, of a bounded sequence is that you have a constant m that is greater than or equal to the absolute value of Sn. So the, the informal definition of, of a bounded sequence is that the absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to some constant m, where in the formal definition, you have the set of Sn, and you're saying that the set of Sn, the set of the entire sequence, uh, where the index is n, are an element of the natural numbers, and that the entire sequence is also less than or equal to some constant m. So this is this, this is the this is also correct. This, this is just, this is the uh, algebraic way of seeing this. So you have the absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to the absolute to a constant m. Now in this case, so since this is the definition of what it means to be bounded, or what it means for a sequence to be bounded then we need to show that this sequence over here, that this convergent sequence in, in, this, in this setting is also bounded. So now you can understand why I would use the reverse triangle inequality, because I want to get it in this form, in this, in this definition of what it means to be bounded. So I took the absolute value of Sn, and I said the absolute value of Sn is less than this. And so the absolute value of Sn in the definition of bounded is less than or equal to the app to M. So now, you know, a lot of you are probably thinking, if I just select M to equal this, then that's it. We have our we have our solution. But not quite. You're you're very close, but not quite. So we're gonna define M to be something that maybe you wouldn't quite expect. So I'm going to write it down, and then I'm going to explain. So over here now, what I'm saying is to define define M. So what I'm saying is to define M to be the maximum of this set over here that I just that that I created. Now notice the here that Sn. Notice here that Sn is less than absolute value of s plus epsilon. So m has to be either greater than or equal to, to absolute value of sn. So this would obviously could be a selection of m. But in this case, you have m being the max of all these things. So why? Why did I pick m to be the max of all these things? Well, I'm going to show you. I think a picture is the best way to illustrate.
So imagine we have, so imagine this is SM. So imagine that this is SM. So this would might be S1, and this bump might be S2, and this might be S3, and S4, and S5, and X6, and S7, and it continues on and on. And then, and then after this point over here, it starts converging. Now, this part where it starts converging is when you have absolute value of S plus epsilon. And that's when small n is greater than big N and it starts converging. So small n is the index numbers. And when the index numbers is greater than some, some certain point on the x-axis, so when it gets far enough along, it'll start, it'll start converging to a single, it'll start leveling off to a single value. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if we pick this to be the boundary, to be the bound of the sequence, it won't contain the entire sequence. It's gonna have some parts, maybe this, maybe this little, this little trough over here, and it'll have some couple of, you know, you know, the little bits and pieces of the of this part, but it won't contain the entire sequence. So, for instance, if the if this is maybe S1, S2, S3, um, S4, S5, let's say let's say this is the highest, or this is the highest point. Let's say that this is this bump over here is the highest point. Then Let's say this is uh, let's say this is point S eight, right? So then S eight is included inside this inside this. So we're picking the max, which simply means that we are picking the highest, the 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 greatest point. So even if we have a negative point that's like negative one hundred, it'll just it'll become positive because they're all absolute values. So the absolute value tells us that the that the largest point, regardless of whether it's positive or negative will be the bound for a conversion sequence. And as you can see, since the conversion sequence is leveling off, then, or it's converging at some point, then we can always pick uh, an upper bound and a lower bound by deciding, by seeing which is the highest, uh, which, which point is the highest, or which point has the largest value. That's why we pick the absolute value of S1, S2, S3, all the way to S capital N. Capital N is when um, after 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 capital N everything starts converging. So all the way up until it starts converging, which is when you have absolute value of S plus epsilon. So we pick the largest number of this, and then if we do that, then we'll always have the correct capital M which states for the entire, for, so for really, so I mean, so for real, the, the entire sequence will always be bounded when it's converging. So I hope uh, this, this uh, gave you some ideas and some insights and, you know, just for a little added effect, you know, maybe, yeah. So we can see that the, that this that this is bounded. It's it's in between these two boundaries. So um, this also so this shows us that that if we pick m to be to be this to be the maximum of, of this set, then it shows us that any general convergent any any sequence that converges. Uh, any, any, yeah, any sequence that converges must also be bounded. So I hope this satisfies your curiosity about why convergent sequences are bounded. This is also this is a very fundamental um, result when beginning studies on sequences, and I hope that this video has cleared some questions. Uh, feel free to leave some feedback, and I hope you enjoy the video. Have a nice day.